what to do, what not to do. Typically, when we talk about help, we talk about what to do and what not to do. Lots of do's and don'ts. And believe me, there's a lot of doing and don'ting that goes around, right? For being healthy. And how to do it, how to be successful in what we, what we want to do. We're going to touch on each of these, but our main focus is going to be on why. That's our main focus today and tomorrow. Now, some years ago, uh, some of you who might be a little bit older and used to watch television the way I used to when I was a youngster, probably would recognize uh, that statement on top, longevity being live long and prosper. <coughs> the Bible, however, doesn't say live long and prosper. The Bible says prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So that's how it was John. The Bible expands on what Spock or anybody else might say. <coughs> because it is putting health not just in the context of what we are and what we do physically, but also in the context of heaven. But now I ask, is this only about living longer? Is being healthy about living longer? Some years ago in National Geographic, this came up. This was on the cover of National Geographic. And it was a story <laughs> talking about looking all over the world for the people who live the longest. And there were three communities that were found, later on written up in a book called Blue Zones, about these three communities that lived so long. Many people who were living 80, 100, and above 100 years old. One of those groups was a group in Okinawa. And that's where that woman came from, that young woman. Okay? She was not the oldest in her community. She was one of the youngsters. <laughs> and then there was a group in a place called Sardinia. Those folks, very interesting, very small, uh, small community, they intermarry. And, and it was surprising because people, when they intermarry, typically get genetic defects that cause them to get more susceptible to sickness. But this group, everybody was somebody else's uncle, cousin, brother, aunt, or somebody. And they were all living to 80, 90, 100, 105 years old. And I want to tell you, these people were not vegetarian. They didn't even have a word for vegetarian. But they had a genetic protection. That's what they had. Now, how many of you have that same genetic protection? I see one person. OK, good. <laughs> so you're going to be going with the Sardinians in a little while, right? The third group was a group in a little town filled with smog in Southern California, a place called Loma Linda. And the people in Loma Linda, compared to any other group across the country, were living longer than anybody else. As a matter of fact, depending on which estimates you use, it would be anywhere from 8 to 12 years longer. And some people say, well, maybe because they didn't have too much to do, it just seemed longer. And no, no, it was really longer. People were living longer. As a matter of fact, Showcase was one of the surgeons, okay, somebody that I knew who was uh, one of my professors, Dr. Ellsworth Wareham, who at the age of 95 was still scrubbing to do open heart surgery. As a matter of fact, he didn't tell patients his age. Because they might think, 95, no, 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 not him, right? But he finally retired at age 95. Amen. 95. Amen? Amen. 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 And then they showed us uh, some pictures of some young ladies, okay, up in their 90s. And these were riding bicycles and running and jogging and doing exercises. And they said, wow, this is, this is Loma Linda. And you probably know the history or heard the name Hulda Crooks. You know, she started her exercise program when she was in her 60s. And 
she was the first and oldest woman to climb Mount Fuji in Japan. Okay? And she did that when she was in her 80s. Okay? She did practically every mountain of importance in the United States, she climbed. And she started when she was in her 60s. How old did I say? 60s. 60s. If she could do that in her 60s, we don't have to wait until we're in our 60s to do this, see? But the question is, is what we do for help just because we want to live longer? Well, let me give you some statistics about longevity, long life, okay? And since you guys have had many classes on this, I, I know you're gonna follow me just, just right, okay? Here's what we see here, dependent, no, without uh, consideration of age uh, or race, sorry, without consideration of this, this, uh, all right, here we go. Race or gender, what you would see is that the, the life expectancy keeps going up and up and up. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. People all around us are living longer. The life expectancy today is higher than it was 10 years ago. People are living longer. But you also know the rest of that story. The people are living more with chronic diseases than they ever have before. So just living longer isn't necessarily translate to living better. Okay. Now let me give you a good statistic, and if you have a pen and paper, you might want to write this one down. This has been scientifically documented that the people who live the longest celebrate more birthdays. <laughs> so the more birthdays you have, the longer you're living, okay? So write this one down because you'll need to know it sometime later. I'll give you a quiz, right? What else? What we have noticed is that despite the fact that people are living longer, there seems to be a point where people just aren't getting past. It's like, you know, there's a box here, and we don't have too many people, even though the curves go up, 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 people are living, 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 but there comes a point when, boom, you know, uh, the life expectancy drops off. Now, this has all kinds of scientific uh, explanations and whatnot, but there seems to be, for human beings, some limit as to how long we can live. And it's somewhere around 100 to 120 years. So just living longer may mean, OK, so I'm going to live to a ripe old 110. And then I die. Well, that's not too bad if you live and on your 110th birthday, you go skydiving. <laughs> and you're very active all the time, that, that sounds pretty good to me, to live to be 110. So the life expectancy has been moving up, but the lifespan really has not moved up very much. And then we find that for people to age successfully, there are several things that are involved. And let's see here. These are all health things, eh? Avoidance of disease. How do you like that for something that keeps you healthy? Avoid getting sick. I mean, there are some things that we already know. You do this and you get sick. Therefore, what do you think is a good advice? Don't do it. You guys, you've been in this seminar before. <laughs> Don't do it. Okay? Avoid disability. There are some things. Look, I, I have had guys with high blood pressure. Okay? I, I'm remembering one very specifically out in California. He said, Doc, I'm the king of my castle. I'm not taking those medications. I'm not making any changes because I don't want to have any of those side effects. That's what he told me. I said, but your wife. Forget about my wife, he said. She can't tell me what to do. OK. So I used another tactic. I asked you, what do you think is the worst thing that can happen if you don't get your blood pressure under control? He said, listen, I have a good cemetery plot. When it's my time to go, I'm gone. What he didn't realize is that he was playing into my hand. 
Because you see, I had a stealth position for him. <laughs> I said, you know, what about if you don't die? What about if you just had a stroke? You know, the kind of stroke that leaves you where you can't walk, you can hardly talk, you can't control your spittle, and your mouth is drool coming out there, right? And you, you can't go to the bathroom, you can't eat for yourself, and when you do get to the bathroom, I'm not going to tell you the rest of the story. <laughs> and he looked at me, and I think I was penetrating his thought. I said, no. So when all of these things happen, if they do, who is going to be the king of your castle? you know, you want to consider your wife. Because she's the one who's probably going to have to take care of you. You love your wife? Take care of yourself. See, sometimes we look at the small without looking at the big. Sometimes we look at the big picture and we forget to read the fine print. Social engagement, keeping our minds active. All of these things help us to live longer and live better. And now we have quiz number two. Which ones of these things are associated with long life? We have here, in the first place, genetics. Do your genetics predict who's going to live longer? It helps, OK? I like the fact that. Some people are just born with genes that allow them to live longer, like the folks in Sardinia, right? How about this one? Eating fruits and vegetables. Amen. What do you think? Yeah. Is that associated with it? Yeah. Yes, okay, you guys did the course. How about this one? This is a plate of, it looks like beef steak. How about that? You think that's related to longer life? No, it even shortens the life of cows. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. How about this one? Exercise. Yes. Exercise. That helps. Okay. How about this one? How about this one? Taking some quiet time and relaxing and meditating and being prayer. Huh? Yeah. yeah. How, about, how about prayer? Yes. How about getting rest? Yes. Man, I, I can't teach you anything tonight. Okay. And then we come to this, to this lady. You know, she in Okinawa, uh, when they, they, they took the video of, of her, uh, she was very humble. She was saying, you know, when her, when her kids come by to visit, her kids are like, you know, 70 something years old. Uh, when the kids come by to visit, she still offers them soup. <laughs> the family recipe for soup. She makes the soup for the kids, and the kids are 70 years old. You guys don't see the fun. I, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> the kids are 70, you know what I mean? 75, you know, that's the kids, you know? Uh, and she still takes care of the kids. Huh? Huh? She was in her 90s. Okay? And the kids come to. I, I just thought that was so fun. The kids come to visit. Anyway. And she says if she has a vegetable garden that she works in, and she gives them this, you know, the food that they have, the, the stuff, and then she used that term. I don't remember the term exactly. I ought to, I ought to uh, review it and, and get to memorize it. But anyway, it's a term that they use in Okinawa that says, we eat up until 80% of being satisfied. No more. So they don't eat to fill up to the guilt, you know? No, I, I feel kind of sad I'm, I'm telling you this, and Thanksgiving is just down the you know, but I'm telling you, right? They, they don't eat to fill up to the gills. They eat to about 80%. And they feel that this is part of what gives them long life. You know, she didn't study this. This is what they have in their culture. They know this from, from growing up. And you know what? 